All right, all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Waha Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles, a great millstone, and salutes to the brothers teaching this word to the hopeful elect. And um, this one is uh, going to be from the slave ship. All right, redemption. All right, redemption from the slave ship. Um, yeah, man, because basically bringing this truth to the Israelites, which are the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and our scattered seed. Right, because they were under curses of the Heavenly Father, right, for breaking the commandments. Right, when you look at the state of our people, how they're living today, you can see that they are not keeping the commandments of the Heavenly Father the best that they're able. And that is what has gotten us into this low condition, being at the bottom of society and under these, um, under the trouble that we have in the world, right? The poverty, the oppression. Right, these are all punishments of the Heavenly Father upon His chosen people for breaking His commandments, right? Disobedience. So, at the end of the day, you know, we have a Lord and Savior, all right, uh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, His name being Yahweh Shai, and He is a so called black man according to Revelations. All right, he's going to return in these last days to liberate the elect, right, to free His people from the oppression. Of the wicked so-called white people Which are the Edomites According to the Bible right, And bring a destruction to America Which is Babylon right, The land of our captivity Which is also spiritually Egypt Which we'll get into So I want to start the lesson with Deuteronomy 28 and 15 And it reads But it shall come to pass Right now whenever Scriptures start off speaking about It shall come to pass That is letting you know is speaking of a prophecy, right? Prophecy means to say before, right? Because this, what's going, ha what's going to happen and what's happening has already been foretold, right? And that's key to understand because this was a part of the Heavenly Father's plan. So it says, It shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to obey to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what's that talking about? That's letting you know that if you didn't follow the instructions of the Heavenly Father, that you are going to be cursed, right? These curses, right? all these troubles, right? all of this misfortune, all, all, of these, all of this evil and bad will happen unto our people, right? So let's read about some of the curses. The main curse that I'm going to be talk, talking about is down in verse 68. Right? When you read it, it says, And the Lord, Yahweh, shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Right? Shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now, what's that talking about? Because we were slaves in slavery in ancient Egypt under the so-called Africans, which are the Hamites, those whose lineage goes back to Ham. Right, so you would have Mizraim, right, which is uh, the Egyptians, so called, also so called dark skinned people, right? We was in slavery then, but this is talking about another Egypt, right? Because it says Egypt again with ships. Now, when did we go into Egypt with ships, right? That's talking about America, right? Which is spiritual Egypt. Why is that? Let me just get a quick scripture. Uh, Exodus 20. All right, because what does Egypt represent? When the Lord, when the Lord through Moses was telling us that these, that this was going to happen, that we were going to go into Egypt again, you have to imagine what would that have represented? What would that have meant to the Israelites? Be for them, for them being told they were going to go back into Egypt. What was Egypt connected with? It was slavery. That's why when you read Exodus 20 and 2 says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Right? Bondage is slavery, captivity. So that's what that represents to our people. Right? That's slavery. Right? The Lord said he was going to bring us back into Egypt again with ships. Right? So let's get the book of Revelations to show you that it's in fact clearly talking about 
a miracle, right? Because this is a prophecy, right? To happen in the future. So this is Revelations 11 and 8. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. So the Israelites would be taken to a great city, right? And they would be spiritually dead because they wouldn't know their heritage. They wouldn't know who they was. They wouldn't know that they are Israelites, that they were the chosen people of the Lord. They would be thinking that they were Negroes. They would be thinking they were colored, black, Mexican, Puerto Rican, uh, native, uh, Indian, uh, you know, all those different terms, man. Right. But those are slave terms. Right. And who was responsible for doing that? Our enemies, which was the so-called white people, the Edomites. Why? Because they show you in those movies, in the slavery, that they would beat the heritage out of us, right? The, when you look at Roots, how they would make the slaves um, forget who they were, right? They would rename them. After they would rename them, they wouldn't allow them to read the Bible, you know, or, or they would face death. Different things and methods that were in place to make them completely lost, so that's that great city being America, right? Which it says, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So that place, that great city, which America is now uh, ruled, you know, f with the face of a Donald Trump, whose uh, saying is make America great again, because it's now being brought down, right? Where it once was great. But not anymore. Right? And that place is spiritually called Sodom because of the same acts that it upholds as Sodom, the same sex marriage and, and those same acts. But it, it says Egypt also because Egypt means bondage. Now, who's in bondage in America? The Israelites. All right? They were taken there on slave ships and now they are there in poverty in and just oppressed. Right? And they ain't told who they are, and that the Lord, in fact, looked like a so-called black man. That's who. That's what, what knowledge is being taken away. The Lord, his image was X'd out, right, a second time, right, because people think the Lord looks like a so-called white man. That's the lies that is, is being told, right? So when we go back to Deuteronomy 28, after having made that clear, that this is talking about America, right? This was prophesied thousands and thousands of years ago. And it's, it's, it's already come to pass. So it says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So that's America, the transatlantic slave trade. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Because we were taken from our homeland, Jerusalem, right? Uh, after fleeing into the west coast of Africa. And we were taken from there all, and scattered and sold into slavery all over the world to all nations. And we've not been back to our homeland. So it says, And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Right? That's exactly what happened. You had so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, the you know, the people of the uh, Caribbean islands, um, the you know, Native American Indians. Um, yeah, you know, our people were being sold, right, and put on auction blocks being sold to different nations all around the world, right? Um, to, you know, the Dutch, you know, the French, the English, you know, you know, to Europeans, man, uh, hey, man, the actual Africans, which were the Hamites, the right, so-called Africans, because you have Israelites that are among them. But you have um, those that were involved, right? That's why it was the... Um, Transatlantic slave trade, you know, we were sold to Arab nations, so-called um, European nations and, and, and um, Hamite nations, man. So there is a judgment for all that, all right, because they are our enemies, all right? That's what the scriptures tell you. Now it says, bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you, right? Because, yeah, it was uh, Israelite men and women, you know, and children on those slave ships going through those curses, and no one was able to redeem us, right? Meaning, um, you know, to save us out of that condition. That's what that buy you means, right? Because we were bought and sold. So that's talking about us being 
saved, right? being redeemed. Because why we've had leaders such as um, you know Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, which they all failed in trying to bring justice and freedom to you know the Israelites, right? Because only one man is able to do that, right? Our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. So let's read about that. This is Luke one and sixty-eight. It says, "Blessed be the Lord God of Israel." Right. So yeah, because remember, He's our power. He's not you're dealing with the other nations; they're heathens. Right, his chosen people is the Israelites. Now it says, For he have visited and redeemed his people. Right? So not all these nations are gonna be redeemed. They can't. They have no savior. They have no redeemer. Right? The redeemer is for Israel. Right? The Lord went on the cross and shed his blood and became a sacrifice for the sins of his people. Right? That's why why the elect are going to be saved is because of Yahweh Shai, right? That um, he became that sacrifice, right? So it's already done. It's already set, right? We've been redeemed through his blood, right? And we are waiting for his salvation, waiting for his return. It's already written and set in stone. And I've raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, right? So the power of our salvation, the strength is coming through Yahweh Shai, right? Because he. Is coming once he once he returns. That's it. The end of our, our captivity. The end of the rulership of our, our enemies. They're going down. The Lord's coming with spiritual power, an army of angels from the heavens, and He's going to bring salvation to the elect. All right, as He spake by the mouth of His holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Right, saying the same thing: salvation for Israel. Right, the kingdom of heaven for Israel. 71 says that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Yeah, because we're in the hands of our enemies and they, and they show hate, right? They hate us and oppress us at every chance, right? They're the ones that, same ones that put us on slave ships, threw us over and fed our children to alligators, to fed us to sharks, um, had us in chains and, and whipped and beaten and lynched right? all these things were done unto us by our enemies so the salvation is that we are to be saved from them so how are the other nations going to be saved when they're the ones that are oppressing us if you're going to be saved don't you need to be saved from someone that's oppressing you so the other nations are going to be punished right the israelites are going to be saved it says to perform the mercy promised to our fathers not to all of the nations no our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, to the oath which he had sware to our father Abraham, that we should grant unto us, that he should grant that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Right? So that's what this is about. Right? And do you know what's gonna happen? We're gonna get salvation, justice. And these other nations, they're going to be going into slavery. They're going to get the same judgment and punishment. right? Because the Lord said that although we were cursed, hey, we're going to get over on our enemies. right? Because the Lord, he loves us, man. and He hates Esau. This is Revelations 13, 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So if you put people on slave ships and you enslave them, rob and kidnap people from their lands and, and steal them and make them slaves and make them work forced labor with no wages no pay and then you just have them oppressed and in poverty <laughs> like this is the case that we're in right over in america it's a hellhold for uh, our people all over the world where we've been scattered in impoverished areas right but why is that that was from the the wickedness and the evils that happened in the past history which was through the slave ships, right? The slave trade, slavery. So the punishment is that these nations have to go through the same thing. They're going to be put in slavery, chained up, put on slave ships. They're going to be worked in the field, beaten, working till they sweat and bleed until they, they give up the spirit, right? There's going to be a thousand years of that. And then there will be peace, you know, for the nations. You know, until they they go off, because we're going to be ruling in righteousness, all right, over the nations, all right. 
So there will be judgments, right? So it says, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So yeah, that's what's going to happen, right? You shed our blood. So now you're going to get the same sword upon your neck, you know, in the kingdom when the Lord returns. Because that's why we're being patient. That's why the scripture says that the saints, which are the Israelites, have patience, all right? We're suffering, being oppressed. But when the Lord returns, that's when... We're going to have our reward, all right? Because this is what we believe. We have faith in this, all right? And the Lord is going to bring this to pass, man. So, hey, man, you know, us, we just got to keep enduring and having the faith. That's what it's about. The patience and the faith of the saints, man. And we're going to be redeemed, right? We're going to be back on top in our royal state, ruling the earth in righteousness under the Lord, man. So with that, I'll end it there and say shalom.